prophetic. prophetic. We're looking at the Bible. It, it, it's a book of prophecy. Yes. Two thirds of it is prophecy. And that proves that God is God. So when those disciples walked up to Jesus after they had looked at that building project that had been done by Herod to rebuild the temple, they asked him three questions because he, he prophesied that it's all coming down. Mm-hmm. So he said, they asked him three questions. That was at the Mount of Olives where the Temple Mount was. Yes. And they said, then they're going to walk over to where they often went, uh, Gethsemane and the Olive Grove. There was a big olive press there. So what, about 20 minutes, you'd say? Uh, at least. Little, little but walk. I don't know. They're probably better shape. 15, 20 minutes. They've dropped back from them. He's prophesied, don't get your eyes on these. this building here. It's coming down. So they had three questions. They came back over here. <laughs> Number one, when shall these things be? And that means when the temple's, temple's coming down. And then their last question to him was, and what shall be the sign of your coming? The word coming there is parousia. And parousia, we learn from the papyri, which is some ancient writings found in Egypt. A lot lot of the Hebrews went down there when uh, the temple was destroyed, really. Mm -hmm. The first temple and the second temple. And, And I think the second temple times primarily from the papyri. And they found that in these papers, that word parousia, not only just the Hebrew uh, but that word parousia, not only just uh, about religious things, rather. Mm-hmm. Uh, it meant the coming of a king or an emperor. So they're Jews, and they've heard all through the Old Testament that the Messiah is going to come. He's going to set up a kingdom, an earthly kingdom. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, thinking, they're thinking, Shelley, that he's going to overthrow Rome. Right. So um, they ask him for the sign of his coming. Mm -hmm. Now, the sign of his coming in his parousia, he told them, watch the fig tree. Shall we read those scriptures, please? Okay, this is Luke chapter 21 in verses 29 through 33. And he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is nigh now at hand. So likewise ye, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So he told them to watch the fig tree. The fig tree is Israel. We know that from uh, Old Testament scriptures. Mm -hmm. Joel chapter one. Yeah. And uh, Micah, Malachi. Malachi, yeah. But Micah primarily five. Watch the fig tree, Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, and all the trees, those are the other nations of the Old Testament prophets. When they now shoot forth, that means when they come into the prophetic places, You see and know of your own self, summer is nigh at hand. Oh, what a thing that is. You'd have to go back to Daniel chapter 2 and see that summer is the time of the judging of all those kingdoms. It's such a delicious study, though. It's a delicious study, but we don't have time for it. Okay. So when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Now, he's talking about the earthly kingdom that Jesus is going to set up. During the millennial. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. The generation that sees the fig tree and those other nations come into the prophetic places shall not pass away till all is fulfilled. And that's my generation. There you go. I was just going to say. I've been here. But we're going to talk about the end gathering. That's such a sign. Such a sign. Now, when you say in gathering, I'm going to show you that on a chart. Okay, just wait. a minute here. Okay. Now, uh, Israel is the fig tree, and Israel is God's time clock. Now, you cannot watch Israel. How can you watch it if you don't know what's supposed to be happening in it? Exactly. That's a good point. 
You, you have to know God's dealings with Israel. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the board and look at, I, I made this chart myself, uh, well, God's Mom. dealings with Israel. So if there's anything about it that uh, you don't like, I just can only blame this myself. This reminds me of first, uh, about third grade, learning how to tell yeah, time. Third, yeah, yeah, yeah. Learning yeah, yeah. how to watch the clock, learning how to tell time. Yeah, that's right, Shelly. You're right about that. I felt like the Holy Spirit. Gave the Holy you that Spirit moment. must have given oh, you that. Oh, thank you, Lord. Um, God's dealing with Israel. God's this book here is about God's dealings with Israel. Yes. Now, the first dealing with Israel is their choosing and their calling. And of course, that comes with Abraham mm -hmm. and how God chose them. He said, I chose you, I blessed you. Come you're going to be my them. you're going to be my holy nation. Mm -hmm. Then he chose them and he blessed them. The blessing. Yes. He brought, then brought them into the land. Through Joshua. Yes. He brought them into the land and he had a plan in that land. They did not go along with the plan. We're going to talk about that. They didn't keep it. So he goes to plan B. And then there is the scattering. And what he's telling them to watch right here, there's going to be the scattering just after this. Another scattering. Then there will be an ingathering. So Jesus is referring to the ingathering. He is talking to the scattering first, Shelley. First. Don't you remember the temple's going to be destroyed? Yes, exactly. Temple's but, going to be destroyed right here. But and the then Perusia. the Jews are going to be, they're going to be scattered all over the world. Yes. And then just before the Perusia, when he comes to set up his kingdom, mm -hmm. there will be an ingathering. So here we are at the time of the ingathering. Now, he calls Israel, Genesis chapter 3. He calls them. Read Genesis 3, 12. Oh, 12. 12, 12, 12 3. Verse yeah, find three. that. Genesis 12, 3. He calls Abraham out of uh, a land up, uh, near present-day Iraq. And he calls him and he says, leave everything and go to a land that I gave you. Yes. So would you oh, read that, please? yes. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out to thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So we see here the choosing, the calling, and the blessing. Now he said, I'm going to bring you into a land. Yes. The land of Israel. For my calling you, I'm going to put you in a land. And in this land... Um, I'm going to use you. And I'm going to use an ancient map here that we often use. In the 32nd chapter of Deuteronomy. I was just turning there, Mother. I'm just so thrilled. The 32nd chapter of Deuteronomy. Yes. We see that he says he put them, he, he put all the other nations, he put them in the center of it all because they're going to be central to all the nations knowing God. What a strategic he plan. He is going to reveal himself. Mm. His plan for Israel is to reveal himself to the nations through them. So through his strategy, he's specifically put them geographically right in the middle. Right in the middle. Mm -hmm. It says that in the 32nd chapter. Now here is Jerusalem. Here's Europe, Asia, Africa. This is a little land bridge between these continents. Israel's technically in Asia, but it's, it's a land bridge between these continents. Now, the ancient silk routes, the ancient trade routes, cr trade routes, all of the trade routes, and also even armies, the easiest way to get from one of these continents to another was by this land bridge, mm -hmm. via this land bridge right It's there. almost like their center stage. Exactly. And he's put them there for the government, even of the millennium that's coming. Now, his plan is to have them here 
in this strategic place and to bless them. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 28, all yes. about it. I'm going to bless you. And then I think it's 28, 14, Shelley, if you read Deuteronomy. Excuse me, yeah. Deuteronomy 28, 14. 28, 14. He, he's going to place them right here in the middle of all these. And then he says, all the nations, I'm going to bless you coming in. I'm going to bless you going out. I'm going to bless you in the field. I'm going to bless you in the, in the storehouse. You're going to be uh, blessed every way. And the nations are going to see it. That's the mm -hmm. verse I'm looking for, Shelley. Yes. And the nations are and going all to see it. It's verse 10. Okay, verse 10, please read that. And all the people of the earth shall see. So there's something demonstrated. Yeah, it has blessing. to be because they're, 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 they're not godly. They don't have the, they can't see with inner eyes. They only can see with these eyes. Right. And so they're going to see a nation that lives right here and they're so blessed. I mean, their fields are blessed. They're prosperous. Their children, their sheep don't even have a, you know, they're, they're, they don't have miscarriages. Their sheep don't. Everything about them is blessed. Now I'm going to put you right here. They're going to come through and you're going to reveal me to the nations. A good God. But plan B, if dun, you don't do dun, that, dun. you're going to go to verse um, 60, 64, 4. Read it. See it. Plan B. And the, of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. The curses then come after that. If you don't do what I told you to do, the curses are going to come. And the biggest, biggest curse is, and the Lord, Yahovah, shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even into the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shall thou find no ease. All he, right. He's going to scatter them. All right, so we're going to go to plan B. And now we're going to look at uh, God's dealing with Israel. He chose them. He called them. He blessed them. He put them into the land to bless them. They didn't obey him, and he scattered them. Plan B. The biggest scattering came when Jesus was on the earth and he was speaking to his <clears throat> disciples and he told them, um, this city is going to be overrun and the temple is going to be destroyed, the second temple. It was probably the year 30. And in the year 70, Rome came, conquered the city, destroyed the temple, second temple, and carried the people away to all nations of the earth. And there they are called the diaspora. Spore, that's the Hebrew, I mean, Greek word, seed. The Hebrew word is seed. Mm -hmm. And they're going to become the seed all over the earth. They're going to become the witness. Every one of those nations where they're sent, mm. uh, scattered, they're going to become the seed. And then when God gathers them back, there are scriptures which say it's a sign to the nations mm. that God is God. Yes. So thank God, Shelley, we're not living in these times. Yes. We're living right here in the <laughs> in gathering. Oh, oh man, dear God in heaven. God. I don't oh. know how many times I've been to Israel. It's the most exciting. We had the most wonderful Israel trip that you can get. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a part of our 3BI, Billy Brim Bible Institute, but you can get it just to see hours and hours of our going through the whole land of Israel to watch. The in that great in gathering, oh, that true. country that was just uh, destroyed and then, and nothing grew there and it was barren, just like the Bible said it was going to be, mm -hmm. is now prospering. Oh, it is. And in Jerusalem, you can see cranes, huge, giant cranes, everything being built because we are here at the time of the in gathering. I remember Hallelujah. they found some little Perus. Uh, people from Peru, oh, Jews, yeah. and they're up in the mountains of Israel. Yes, they found them. God found them, and All He's bringing over them the earth. home. Bless the Lord. The in gathering, the in gathering. So you watch. Jesus said, "You want to know when I'm coming to set my kingdom up?" Jesus is about to set up His earthly kingdom. Shell. That's it. Now, thank God, I'm a part of the body of Christ. Yes. 
heavenly Jerusalem, New Jerusalem yes. is my home. You're in a different group of I'm people. I'm in a different group of people, mm -hmm. but there's going to be an earthly kingdom. Yes. Now, um, uh, Shelly, read. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, every time in the Bible that it talks about the scattering, it talks about the end gathering. Every time. Every single time. Every single time. time. Thank now, God. God keeps his word and he is bringing them home. My generation has seen it. Shelly, read. Um, on page 3, Deuteronomy 4, 27. Okay. This is Moses talking. This is They haven't even come into the promised land yet, and he's already telling them they're going to be scattered, but something's going to happen when they're there. And I'm glad these first three words, and the, or four, and the Lord will scatter you. Mm -hmm. This is his doing. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left few in number among the nations where the Lord will drive you. And there you will serve gods of wood and stone, the work of human hands that neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But from there, you will. Now let's stop right there. The Hebrew says you will. King James says if you. Oh. There's no if in there. Okay. And, and this, is, uh, this is the English standard. Newer versions get it correct. He didn't say if you do it. You're going to do it. Right. So Big difference. Yeah, big difference. Verse 29. From there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you search after him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in tribulation. Tribulation. That's a word, a narrow place. It's the word for the great tribulation. Mm. It's the word for the birth canal. It's a narrow place so that you're pressure. pressed into from outside pressure. Mm. And there's going to be a time called the times of Jacob's trouble. What is that word trouble in the Hebrew? Tsara. Same one as this one. Yes. When you are in the time of Jacob's trouble, when you are in tribulation, then what will happen? Then all these things come upon you in the latter days. Now, what does that really say, Shelley, in the Hebrew? You end know. of days. In the end of days. You will return to the Lord your God and obey his voice. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not leave you or destroy you or forget the covenant with your fathers that he swore to them. Over and over and over in the what we call the Old Testament, the prophets say, now remember what Jesus said? When the prophets, when those nations come into the prophetic places. Exactly. Like the prophets said they would. Yes, all the trees. and Then all, all the these things are going to be happening. Now here's a, a Jeremiah, the prophet 30 and 31. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. So he promised they're going to come back to the land. That's what they're doing right now, Shelley. Yes, they're possessing right now, it. According to this, they're coming back. Yes. Hallelujah. And he said uh, in, in Jeremiah, verse 10, he said, Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations. Now he's talking to the nations. And declare it in the isles afar off and say, He that scattered Israel will keep him. Will the gather fact, him. The fact will keep him. Will gather him, excuse me. He that scattered Israel will gather him. He scattered them. He's going to gather them. And he's keeping them right now. Israel has enemies. Uh, there's going to come judgment. The other day I was reading along these lines and I came across this statement. Israel's enemies are God's enemies. Yes. I just had that in a book by David Barron. That's probably where I read it. Israel's enemies are God's enemies. The church. So everybody that's coming against Israel is the enemy of God. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, he scattered them. He's gathering them. And there, there, there could be some wars and rumors of wars. 
Boy. Against Israel. Yes. But here it says that he's going to keep them. As a shepherd. Mm -hmm. Keep them, guard them, watch over them. Mm. So anything that Persia, Iran, anything, anybody's going to try to wipe Israel out, it's not going to happen. Right. Because he scattered them. Yes. He'll gather them. Yes. And he's done it. And he's keeping them. Yes. This lets us know there's a time that he has to keep them. Yes. They have enemies. Now, Jeremiah 31, 35. God, you cannot look at end time things, Shelley, and ignore Israel. No. You cannot look at the book of Revelation and ignore Israel. You will have a skewed idea of that book. Right. Mashed potatoes. It, it just won't work. Mm -mm. You have to know that Israel's God's time clock. We see what things are happening by looking at them. And not to plug in the church into these things where it's directly to the house of Jacob, the house of Israel, specifically to them. Well, the there's Jews. things that are specifically to us. The, yes. New, the New Testament letters are specifically to us. And um, there are things that are particularly to the Jews. But God does away with any idea of your thinking that he's done away with Israel. Mm -mm. If anybody tells you God's through with Israel, then you should read them these scriptures. Jeremiah 31, 35. Thus saith the Lord, who gives the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night. <laughs> the sun, the moon, the stars. God's witness in the sky. And it's faithful. Every morning we say the sun comes up. Mm -hmm. Every night the sun goes down. And I like, it's almost like God's commercial that he gives himself. Mm -hmm. I'm the God which giveth the sun. Mm -hmm. I'm that God. I'm that God. I set this whole thing. Yes. And, and, and they don't come, they do. They, they do they, it, it works just like I planned it. Yes. Thus saith the Lord, which gives the sun for a light by day, the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night, the God who divides the sea when the waves thereof roar, Jehovah of hosts is his name, the Lord God of armies. Glory. If these ordinances depart, sun runs away, the moon goes away. The cow jumped over the moon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the moon runs off with the spoon, whatever. Yeah, whatever. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Shelley, in the millennium, there's going to be a nation of Israel. Yes. <laughs> Replacement theology says the church has replaced it, but they have not. No. People get their men time doctrine mixed up because they, they want to think God did away with Israel, but he didn't. No. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall cease before be from being a nation before me forever. If heaven above can be measured, and nobody can, mm -mm. and the foundation of the earth searched out beneath, and nobody can, I will cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done. He didn't cast them off. He said that in the New Testament, in the writings of Paul. Thank God. They did not cast no. off. And so to understand the times of the end, to understand when Jesus is coming, you're going to need to take a look with Eastern eyes at God's dealing with Israel. Yes. And we're going to take a look with Eastern eyes at that great prophetic book, the second letter of Peter. Of Peter. The man so close to Jesus. Now, in this first session, the prerequisite to all the other courses in 3BI, Billy Brim Bible Institute, um, you're going to you're going to see that we talk about three groups of peoples, not we, the Bible. The Bible talks about three groups of peoples and you have to rightly divide the word. That's what the class is called, rightly dividing the word. There are three groups of peoples according to the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 10, 32. Mm -hmm. The Jews, the nations, Gentiles, and the church. In the what we call the Old Testament, just two groups, the Jews and the Gentiles, the Jews and the nations. That's the better translation. And in the third group, in the new covenant, after Jesus went to heaven and the letters started being read, mm -hmm. any Jew, any Gentile could believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and then they become a new creature, a third 
brand new species that never had existed before. So they're in before. a new group. They're in entirely. a new group. Any Jew, any Gentile that believes God raised Jesus from the dead. So you don't see this creature until this new creation, until the writings of the Apostle Paul. So the Jews, the nations, and the church, we're coming to the end of days. We are at the end of days. We're going to look at that even closer as we look at the book of Peter. And we're seeing that the signs are here of what he's doing. He's doing something with the Jews. He's got a plan for the Jews. He's doing something with the nations. He's doing something with the church. You're going to see that in this class that we're offering, an introductory class to 3BI, Billy Brown Bible Institute. We invite you to get, I think it's Eschatology 101, but you can just remember it by rightly dividing the word. 